Ten years later, in 1979, Mr. Goenka began to teach internationally, to meet her. I asked Mr. Goenka if Vipassana offered a solution to this problem. When there is terrorism, innocent people are being killed, so much of inhuman actions are being taken, it is the duty of the state, the government, to protect their people. That they have to do. But there also, when a strong action is taken against anybody, this technique teaches that you first observe yourself. Somebody is doing something wrong, and if you say, I am a personal meditator, doesn't matter, he will suffer for his own karmas. doesn't help. You have to stop this person to harm others. If we are not stopping this person harming others, we are supporting this person. He will keep on harming, keep on harming. So as a state, it is the duty to stop. But the leaders of the state, if they learn this technique, then they will observe, just for a few seconds, my mind is now equanimous. I observe sensations and I am not reacting to it. Now whatever action I take is not a reaction, it is an action. And very strong action. Having compassion for these people, this person is also ignorant. He doesn't know. He's harming himself and harming others. He can't kill others without generating impurity in the mind. A miserable person. And making others miserable. So I have to take strong action because soft action doesn't work. For others who are terrified now, the person is again very helpful. This terrorist want that the entire people, they get very much terrified. And then kneel down before them, all that, whatever you say, we agree. Because you are so much afraid. The technique says, don't be afraid. You keep on observing, there is fear, you keep on observing, there is fear and sensations, you come out of sensation, and you are fearless. Let things happen. You are fearless. But with fear, you are spoiling the whole atmosphere around you. So technique helps those people who are full of fear because such an inhuman thing has taken place and it may take place again any time. So the fear is there. How to come out of that fear? And the state has to take action with a balanced mind, with compassion, but very strong action. This is the only solution. And slowly, these people also will start understanding, especially in the prisons we find, very hard criminals, people who are the murders, and how they change. It is, it is a government's work, we cannot see anything, but those people who are now out of this uh, terrorist, who are now in prison, have been taken in prison. If not all, if some of them start practicing this, a change will come in them and then the word will start, start spreading amongst them. Oh, there is something good, what we are doing? Every religion, now they are fighting in the name of religion. Fanatics in the name of their own religion. They want everybody to be converted to their religion. There's the madness. And when they start observing, they find that, oh, my religion, I have not understood my religion. My religion says so. My religion says so. Every religion teaches morality. Every religion teaches purity of mind, love, compassion, goodwill. They start realizing. And a big change has come. A number of terrorists in the, in the prisons. This is how it, the work can start. On the one hand, there is a mass of terrorism. On the other hand, the Dhamma should start in more and more people and it will start entering these terrorists also and they will realize that we are wrong, we are wrong. Many of these terrorists in the jail, there was a sick terrorism in India and uh, I remember one of them in the course, he started realizing what we are doing. We, are, we have not understood Guru Nanak's the, the words, his teaching, and we are going on the wrong path. And within a year or so, he was so very much changed, he was never given any parole to go out of the jail. But because the officers found a big change came in him, so they gave him 15 days parole. And he says, I won't go to my members of the family. He went to the hard core of these terrorists, to go and tell them that we are wrong. And he told me that if I go there, they might kill me even. Because when I talk anything against what they are doing, and they say that uh, I have been brainwashed by 
by the government or something, I might be killed, but I don't care. I'll go there and went there, explain them. I do not know how many were influenced, but slowly in, in a year or two, the terrorism of the six went away. Not that this was the only reason, but this was one of the reasons. So like this, good things can also spread. Now bad things are spreading in the name of religion. Good things will spread also in the name of purity of the mind, which is uniform, universal, everywhere the same, in every religion. This is what these people, terrorists, start understanding. That what we are calling my religion, my religion is only outer shell. Inside is the same, whether it is Islam or whether it is Christianity or Hindu. Every religion has the same thing. The word Islam means peace. When two Muslims meet, they say, Salam wa alaikum, may peace be to you. And other replies, wa alaikum Islam, may peace be to you. Look, the Dharma, Dharma says peace. And what is happening? Because they give importance only to the outer shell. Not only Muslim, don't blame, don't blame them. Every religion has become corrupted because the outer shell has become so important. The inner essence, they talk of inner essence. Everybody will talk of inner essence, but nobody will practice. That is the essence. That is what dharma is. And that is what Buddha emphasized. Nothing, nothing else except morality, control of mind, and purification of mind. Do you think we're born pure? And if so, where do these impurities begin? It is beginning every moment. So somebody says, when it started, we can't. You can't say we that. can't go to that. Because every moment, every moment impurity starts because of ignorance. One does not know what is happening and what one is doing deep inside. And of course, according to the enlightenment of Buddha, and according to people who reach the higher stage, there is a constant flow coming from behind. So life after life, life after life, the continuation is there. And every moment, either you add something more in it or you take out something from it. Every moment there is this process going on.